I think the thing that we, we enjoy most about it is, is probably the, the one no one really wants to admit is that uh, out of all the, the various apocalypses or apocalypse, whatever, um, it's the zombie apocalypse which allows us to be monsters. The thing we need to really fear is ourselves. I mean, mm. we were talking about this earlier. Why, why would so many people on Facebook want a, an apocalypse? Well, we want to call the population, and it's the only legitimate way to do it. I think um, what, one thing I've learned about doing alternate reality games is people's desire to make their everyday lives more adventurous. Or more, or, and in a way, um, what I've realized, come to realize is that we feel that our everyday lives, our natural lives, has, hasn't got much agency for these sorts of experiences, so that we're already zombies. But in being able to play a game about zombies, we suddenly become more alive. We're, we're, we're playing out roles. We're, and so in a way that the apocalypse actually gives us all of this amazing ability now to act in every, like use our physical form, run through forests, fight things. I had a tweet from a, a friend yesterday afternoon who, who knew, that, knew that this panel discussion was going on. And he said um, he, he'd like to know from the panel what people would think if a really well well a uh, well-dressed zombie or a well-constructed zombie uh, turned up at a, a costume party and someone ran and got an axe and clocked them on the head, whether that would be um, kind of legitimate. legitimate, yeah, if it was... Yeah, it would, it would, probably not. Probably go to jail for 20 or 30 years if you did that. Actually, one of the great uh, uh, blog posts I did at, uh, at, at the Burger a couple of years ago was whether the, um, the Star Trek monsters, the Borg, whether they're vampires or whether they're zombies, because right. yeah, there's elements of both in there, and it's it's the loss of individuality which makes the Borg so horrifying. I, I, well, I, I've thought about it now, oh. and um, the interesting thing that comes out of zombie or any kind of survivalist movie for me is is the discussion, the decision about whether it's safer to stay together or to go it alone. So for me, sometimes this idea of having to be go, go into survivalist mode, for me, I take the idealistic road. It's like, wow, I get to like run around in the country zone with a bunch of new people. You and, get new friends. And new, you know. <laughs> so, so for me, it's, it's, it's kind of this um, um, almost this vision of, of, a, of an adventure. It's a topic that uh, Max Brooks looked at in um, World War Z or World War Z, whatever, which is that modern armies are not well suited to... Uh, battling this kind of... You've got that whole uh, Battle of Yonkers scene in World War Z where it actually talks about the strengths of the modern military become their weaknesses when they, they have to go up against something like this. And, um, I think most people agree that uh, you'd need... you'd need a military force that did both ranged combat and... Um, and hand to hand. For all the skeptics out there, if you um, if you're sort of shrugging this all off, uh, off and saying ah, it's never going to happen, there's not there's not going to be any sort of supernatural intervention or anything like that, uh, or that the the science is, is doesn't really support it, just go and Google uh, the, the the word quadriceps, uh, cordyceps, c o r d y c e p s, which is a fungus that uh, takes over the brains of insects. Uh, we're not that far off away from it, uh, and the CDC. Look at the American Center for Disease Control. Um, it's it's not a matter of if, but when, folks. Uh, start stockpiling now.